So in this next example, we want to look at the p series, the p series. So this is 1 over n to the power of p, and decide for what values of p does it converge and what values of p does it diverge. We've already seen a couple of examples. When p equals 1, this is the harmonic series. And we know that it diverges. When p equals 2, this is the series 1 over n squared. And we know that it converges. So we already know that for different values of p, the question of convergence or divergence can change. When p equals 1, it's divergent. When p equals 2, it's convergent. This is saying, try to figure out what values of p, uh, what the values p have to be for which it converges, and then, of course, those for which it diverges. Now here, we can maybe make a connection. We've seen something like this before. We saw it actually in the context of improper integrals. 1 over x to the p dx. And here, the question is, when does the improper integral converge or diverge? And we've answered this. This converges when, do you remember, when p is bigger than 1 and diverges when p is less than or equal to 1. So that's an important thing to keep in mind here. We know some information about the corresponding integrals. Can we use that to answer the question about series? Well, you may say now it should be quite clear because we can make the comparison of this with the integral and we get our claim that the series 1 over np converges when p is bigger than 1 and diverges when p is less than or equal to 1. So that's our claim. Um, it's not as straightforward as just saying, well, it's because the corresponding integral has that property. There is a subtle point here. The only way we can apply the integral test is if the corresponding function is decreasing and positive and continuous. So we need to make sure that this is the case. Well, the problem is if p is negative, if p is a negative number, this is, this is not saying you know, anything about p being positive. This is in general about any p. So we have to consider the case that p could potentially be negative. Oh, that should be less than 0. When p is less than 0, what do we have? Well, we have that the series over into the p is actually n to the absolute value of p. So to this positive absolute value of p is now some positive exponent. Now these terms are not decreasing. So the underlying function is not a decreasing function. So I can't apply the integral test. This is the issue here. I can't apply the integral test unless the terms are decreasing and satisfy the other hypotheses as well. These terms aren't decreasing. Integral test is out. Can't use it. So I need another alternative argument in this case. So in this case, the series is that. And the terms here do not go to 0 as n goes to infinity. The terms aren't going to 0. So we have then that the series can't possibly converge by the test for divergence. So by the test for divergence, so we're instead of the integral test, here we're using the test for divergence. What was the test for divergence? It said that if a series converges, the terms have to go to 0. If the terms don't go to 0, then the series can't converge. So that's the test for divergence. Here the terms don't go to 0, so the series diverges. So for, by the test for that divergence, the series diverges. What about if p is equal to 0? Well, if p is equal to 0, 1 over n to the p is equal to just the sum of 1s. And again, that diverges. Uh, again, for the test for divergence, the terms don't, just don't go to zero. Um, they, they stay at one. So we're just adding up infinitely many ones, and, and that's going to be divergent. It's going to go off to infinity. Now, what about the case when p is bigger than zero? Well, in this case, the corresponding function is 1 over x to the p is decreasing now. This is a decreasing function. 
decreasing, continuous, and positive. So now we can say by the integral test and that the integral of f of x dx from 1 to infinity converges, then the series sum of 1 over n to the p converges. So that's the case we can use the integral test in case where the function was decreasing. We still had to split off these other two cases, which didn't fall into the case where we could apply the integral test. So what that means is now we've got a, a collection, a family of series, which we should keep in our back pocket as another series we know information about. We know the geometric series, whether they converge or diverge, depends on their R value, their common ratio. And in that case, for the geometric series, we know exactly what they converge to when they do converge. We've also got these p series now, where by knowing the value of p, whether it's bigger than 1 or, or less than or equal to 1, we can decide whether it converges or diverges. So the geometric series and these p series are two really important series to have in mind. Keep them in your back pocket and remember them, because they're going to come up again and again and again.